السلام عليكم الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمد ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار الحمد لله we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we seek his assistance and his guidance whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides there is none who can lead him astray and whomsoever is misguided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is none who can guide them I openly bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a slave, servant, and messenger. Ila akhirihi. To the end of it, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the best of guidance is that of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best, truest of speeches is that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yani the Qur'an and the worst of all affairs in this deen are newly invented matters in this deen and every newly invented matter is a straying. Every straying leads to the hellfire. When I'udhu billahi, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. The topic of today's khutbah, tried to keep it very simple. And basically the topic today is check yourself. Okay? Check yourself. Sidna Umar radhullahu anhu would say, Hasibu anfusakum qabla tuhasabu. Evaluate yourself. Take yourself to account. Before you are, you, you are taken to account. Before you're taken to account on the Day of Judgment. It is incumbent on us as Muslims that we constantly have a self-audit, okay, a self-critique, and we constantly take ourselves to, uh, to account. We are in the midst of a very holy season right now. Right? Because we are in the middle 
of three consecutive Ashwal al-Hurum, the three sancti the, the four sanctified months, but there are three consecutive. And we are in the middle of uh, we are at, at in the second part of Dhul Qada. So this is you know uh, the month right before Dhul Hijjah. We are beyond a month and a half from Ramadan. Okay, and we are entering into the holiest days of the Islamic calendar, the holiest days of the year. Okay, this is what we have to understand, that these days that are, are coming upon us are very heavy. They're very, very opportunist for those who are seeking opportunities. Okay, these are great opportunities and, and the most holiest moments that we had. Before the month of Ramadan, weeks before, maybe even a month before, there were programs, there were workshops that were Ramadan, welcoming Ramadan, preparing for Ramadan, right? We had preparation well in advance. But brothers and sisters, we are coming upon days that are even more holy than the days of Ramadan. The most holiest days of the Islamic calendar. And these days, the, the deeds are most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these days than any other days of the year. So it's very important that we understand the importance and the magnitude of these days that are coming upon us so that we prepare accordingly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Fajr, Wal-Fajr wa layal al Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the Fajr, the daybreak. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by something, He makes qasm of something. This elevates the status of whatever it may be. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala usually swears about something before He gives us the khabar, before He gives us the message and tells us what you need to pay attention to, what's important. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَالْفَجْ وَلَيَالٍ عَشْ And these ten nights are, as the scholars say, the ten nights of Dhul Hijjah which are witness to the ten days of Dhul Hijjah, which are the holiest days of the calendar. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us the importance of this self-evaluation, that we need to be prepared going into this month. Being a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most honorable, the most noble, the most dignified of jobs you can have. Right? So if... You know, certain people, they strive, they go to school to get a degree so that they can land a high-paying job, or they can land an honorable job so that they can, you know, brag about it and talk to people and say, hey, you know, I'm a neurosurgeon, or I'm a lawyer, I'm an attorney, or I'm an engineer, or whatever the case may be. But the most noble of, of service you can do, the most noble job you can have is to be a abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are living in times that the focus is on immediate feedback, immediate compensation. Okay? And we should be implementing a progress report constantly. We need to be implementing a progress report. Because what happens is we look for immediate feedback. You mess up at work, there's going to be a supervisor who's going to be quick to let you know you messed up. You messed up at school, you get your grade back, and you see what you, what you got. Okay? We see the paycheck, we see the reward, and we magnify it. As if that reward, that tangible reward that we're receiving in this dunya, actually has value. Okay? And that's the thing that we work for. We should con we, the problem is we take advantage, or I'm sorry, we take for granted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. And the many chances that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extends to us. Okay? So we think, hey, I've, been, I've lived to 40 years old, or I've lived to 20, or 15, or whatever the case may be. We think that we're invincible. We don't realize that there will be co come a time where all this will end. All this will come to an end. And we have to think about that constantly. Okay? As the Prophet told us, Remember constantly the, constantly the destroyers of pleasure. 
And that is, the destroyer of pleasure is the remembrance of death. The Prophet ﷺ encouraged us to remember death uh, regularly. We always think we have tomorrow. Okay? And this is an important thing that we cannot take tomorrow for granted. You cannot assume that you will live another day, another hour, or another minute. And in school, as I said, you're constantly being assessed. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are constantly being assessed. You are constantly being evaluated. Okay? But the only difference is, there aren't immediate consequences. There are sometimes immediate consequences. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish you in this dunya, and he'll, he'll save the punishment for the hereafter, which is a more severe punishment. But there's not always, there's not always something to get us to, to, to remind us, you know, that we have to check ourselves. Okay? Uh, when we were younger, they used to sing, you know, those rappers used to say, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Right? So, check yourself. Evaluate yourself before, you know, you put yourself into turmoil. And you, you, you suffer a, a, a uh, you know, a detrimental uh, uh, consequences. When you work for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the results are withheld for that inevitable meeting that you will have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The results are withheld for that meeting that you will have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why it is so important for you to have an accurate gauge of where you stand with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a constant basis. You have to have an accurate gauge. And in order to have an accurate gauge, you have to have a clean heart. You have to have a heart that's on the fitrah. Qalbun salim. That is a sound heart. That is not contaminated by any of these you know, uh, things that are around us, these distractions that are around us. What happens if you make a mistake at work? Or you make a mistake at work, uh, at school? Okay? Maybe you get a bad grade or a poor evaluation. Under severe circumstances, you may lose your job. You might lose your job, right? But what, is, what are those consequences compared to the consequences of failing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What does that equate to in comparison to failing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah al-Shams, okay, this is the largest sequence of qasm, of swearing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does. Okay, you know everybody's familiar with Surah al-Shams. Okay, I'm not going to go through all the ayat, wa shamsi wa duhaha, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by different creations that he has. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala segues into something very important. After the swearing, it brings our attention and gets us prepared for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to say. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Successful is he who purifies it. And destroyed is he who corrupts it or neglects it. Okay, as I said, we are over a month and a half from Ramadan. And ask yourself, did I improve? Did I progress in my standing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? and his book. You're only answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you're a Muslim. How many of you are better off today than you were at the start of Ramadan? Ask yourself that question. How many of you are better off today than you were at the start of Ramadan? We focus on material things as a society. We need to figure out our net worth. But our net worth in this terms, in this dunya, it is basically your assets minus your liabilities. And that equals your net worth, right? From a financial standpoint. We judge people on financials in this dunya. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has the true judgment, the true gauge, is judging you on something far greater than that. Okay? So we have to understand that our net worth is the condition of our heart, is the condition of our iman, is how we live our lives. That is our net worth. Unfortunately, many of us are like that child in the experiment, the psychological experiment, where they took a child and they gave the child two options. They asked the child, they said, listen, would you like a treat for today? 
If you say no, we will withhold and we will give you two treats tomorrow. And what the child, what does the child say? I know right now. I want now. I want immediate gratification. Give me that treat now. I don't want to wait till tomorrow. I don't know if tomorrow is, is going to happen. But the reward is doubled. It's multiplied. So if you wait, if you're patient, then you'll have a multiplied reward. But unfortunately, we have childlike tendencies. We tend to have these childlike tendencies. How many of you have become lazy with your prayers, your salawat? Okay? Maybe you're snoozing, the alarm clock, you know, you're not getting up for fedj. Ah, it's all right. Maybe tomorrow I'll do it. Maybe I can just get up right before the sun rises and I, right before shuruq and I'll get my prayer in. Okay? And other acts of worship. How many of you in the night, in, in, in the month of Ramadan, were performing night prayers? Qiyam al layl Tahajjud. You were getting up and performing these prayers. And now all of a sudden, you stopped. Okay? We only cling on to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He sends us reminders. When we're sick. When we're in, when we're, when we're in harm's way. When we're asking and we need something. Or we think we need something. Then we call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, I need to pass this test. Oh Allah, I need to get married. Oh Allah, give me another chance. Let me get through this. And the Quran gives us many parables and many examples that are similar to this. Like when the person is stranded at sea, and you know they feel like that's it, the ship is going down. And they call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they say, just let, you know, give me, get, let me get through this time, this opportunity. Let me make it. Let me make it through. And they plead with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They plead with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivers them. He rescues them. And then when they're rescued, what happens? They forget. They forget this even happened. They forget that they were sick and they were worried that death might overcome them. They forget all these different situations that happen in their lives. That's what I mean that we take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy for granted. The problem is, we are always waiting for something to happen. We're always waiting for things to happen. And it's as if we have a contingency agreement with us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator. A contingency agreement. When I do this, when I come back from this, when I accomplish this, Ya Ikhwan, now is the time. Do not delay your repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make your preparations as if you are going to hajj. There's a very limited group that's going to be able to go to hajj. And if you got selected, Mabruk, may Allah bless you on your journey. But if you did not get selected, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you an opportunity to basically simulate what those individuals are going to do, that journey that they are going to embark on. Okay? And this is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us substitutes. He gives us different things that we can do in place of and get the same reward as if we performed this journey. Because not everybody gets afforded that opportunity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most merciful. And He is most merciful to those who fall short and keep trying. Those who fall and keep getting back up. Right? Don't be so hard on yourself. And don't be easy on yourself at the same time. This is a full-time job that you have being an abd of Allah, being a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And treat it like it is. Sometimes people will say, hey, you know, if I'm not getting paid for it, no. But some of the greatest reward is the reward for the things that you don't know that you're getting paid for. Because you're getting paid for it in the spiritual realm. You're getting paid for it by getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's important that you keep trying, even if you fall short. Even if you're dealing with an addiction, okay, or anything, any hardship that you're going through, it is doable to overcome it. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. But if you call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely from the bottom of your heart to deliver you, from that situation and that condition that you're in, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deliver you. Okay? 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assesses us on our effort. And he judges each and every one of us individually. You might look at somebody and you say, oh man, I'm intimidated. That person worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this way. And you know why? You know why you might be intimidated? You ever question why you might be intimidated? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is as satir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is as satir. That he covers. He covers. We only see what we see in public. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَعِزُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُذِلُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Everybody has blemishes. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hides certain people's blemishes. Right? You don't know their true condition with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't know their state with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a secret for only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to know. So, as a Muslim, you have to constantly be trying to improve yourself. Constantly trying to become a better person. And that constant improvement is part of the ibadah and the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should be focusing on personal records. In track. In track. It's all about your PRs. What's your personal record? What did you accomplish? And try every day to become better and better and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of your ability. Okay? And I'm going to say, put the quotations on your. Because everybody's different. Everybody has a different capacity. Everybody has a different fat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to hold everybody to the same standard. We all are very familiar with the story of the, of the woman who committed so much fahisha. So many sins. I don't, I don't want to say what her, 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 her uh, profession was, right? But one of the oldest professions you can imagine, right? That has ever existed, right? And when she was thirsty, she went down to the well. And then she saw a dog with his tongue lolling out. He was thirsty. So she gave him from her boot. She filled her boot with water and gave the dog water to drink. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave her. For one act. One thing she did that she did sincerely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is out of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's infinite mercy. The problem is we are dealing in a time with, and I, I, I try to make this a, a, a regular thing in my khutbahs to mention Masih al-Dajjal. Because Dajjal, the false antichrist, or the antichrist will come at a time when people least expect it and when people stop talking, when imams stop talking about him on the mimbar. Okay? So that's an important thing, that we are living in times of the Dajjali system. Before Masih al-Dajjal comes upon us, there is going to be a peak of immorality. Okay? We will become morally bankrupt, as we are seeing that's happening all around us in society. We are becoming morally bankrupt as a society. It is only paving the way for Masih al-Dajjal and the party of, of Iblis, or Hizb al-Shaytan. Their job is to distract us. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this test, and he created all the different variables of the test. And yes, he created people who are basically, you know, who, who are, uh, you know, uh, the, the soldiers of shaitan in this land. And people who are from Hezbollah, from the party of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that are serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's going to be a constant clash a constant jihad between those two parties. And they are going to constantly try to distract us from our path, from our salat al-mustaqeem. But we can't use them as an excuse. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تعتذروا اليوم This day, don't come with any excuses. Exhaust your excuses while you're in this dunya. Because sometimes we come up with excuses for ourselves for our shortcomings, for why things are happening, why this is going on. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, بِمَا قَدَّمَتْ أَيْدِيَكُمْ From what your hands have put forth. And that's what we need to do. And by the way, I don't want anybody to think I'm being harsh or whatever the case may be. Every time I devise my khutab, any time I devise a sermon, I always devise it as if I'm talking to myself first. I, that's a disclosure. I devise it if I'm talking to myself first, so it's important for everybody to understand that. So, 
We have to get past this distraction. Take advantage of these opportunities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us nafahat, different bursts and gushing of his mercies, that we have to take these opportunities. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a night in Ramadan, that's greater than a thousand, greater than a thousand months, just one night. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us know, we don't know what Laylatul Qadr is. You're shooting in the dark, basically. You're trying to shoot for Laylatul Qadr. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what the holiest day is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what the holiest day is. And what is that? The day of Arafah, which is in the, t it's, it's included in the 10 days, the holiest 10 days of the Hijjah. Okay? So these are bursts and gushing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Take advantage of these opportunities. Do not point fingers. Be accountable. I messed up. I fell short. I need to change. No excuses. You're hurting yourself and you're selling yourself short by looking for excuses. Because in the end, what is that going to do for you? If things don't go as you hope for, question yourself and say, what could I do differently? Keep making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always try to protect your, perfect your ibadah and have a sense of urgency. Okay, that I might not be here tomorrow. Leave off arguments. Okay? Pride and arrogance will only lead to our destruction. And you may win in this dunya, but it doesn't equate to winning in the hereafter. Okay? So you might say, oh, I got into this argument with this, this, this man, I, I really showed him. Or I got with this brother, and I showed him. Or I got into this argument with my spouse, and I showed her. Okay, that's important for us to understand that you might be better in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just by leaving the argument. Even if you know you're right. Even if you know you're right. You may win a lawsuit. You may have sold, you may, you may have uh, bodyguards in this dunya. You know, people that protect you and people that advocate for you. On the day of judgment, you will have none of that. You will have no excuses. You will have nothing to hide behind except for your actions and what you've done. Those are the only things that will be able to advocate for you. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow to advocate on your behalf. Okay? And it's your actions. Just recently, this week actually, I had to go in for an MRI on my brain. Right? And it's a constant reminder. You know, when you're in there and you're in that MRI, and it's just like, if you're claustrophobic, it's, it's tough. It's rough. Right? And just thinking, you know, there will come a time where you won't have any hawla or quwa. You will have no ability. You will have no qudra. You have no ability to do anything. And you'll just be there. Just alone. And this reminded me. And also further of a reminder, I could have received a diagnosis that would have changed my life forever. I could have received a, a diagnosis that would have changed my life forever. Completely changed my perspective. Are we waiting for that? Are we waiting for that moment where you get that diagnosis or you get some news that is really going to change the way you think? There was a very good series on, on YouTube, and I, uh, uh, I'll, I'll end the first part of the khutbah by talking about this. That the brother said it was a, a khutbah, it was a, like a series that says, gifted with cancer. He was gifted with cancer. I had everything. He had all these different cars, collections of cars, whatever the case may be. And he didn't really, he wasn't close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until he got that diagnosis that he has cancer, a chronic illness. And he dedicated his life, dedicated his life, put all his sacrifice, all his money to just go to do humane efforts, humanitarian efforts in Africa and all the different parts of the world. He went to different countries. Does it take for us to receive a diagnosis like that? Does it take for us to be on our deathbed, you know, on in an intensive care unit, or just surviving an accident and saying, you know, now I'm going to change? We need to humble ourselves. We need to make a pact to change ourselves for the better. And it starts right now. You have to think with the mentality, I'm ready to change right now. 
because you don't know that you'll have any time after this. And humble yourself in front of your Creator and in front of the servants of your Creator because there's one thing to be confident, but you need to remember where you came from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الْإِنسَانُ أَنَّ خَلَقَنَاهُ مِن نُطُفَةٍ فَإِذَا هُوَ قَصِيمٌ مُبِينٌ Allah created us from a sticky substance. We were nothing. We were nothing. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا اسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ وَلِيُّ لَكُمْ اسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ فِي النُّوَهُ وَالْغَفُورُ بِسْلَنَا وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهُ وَالصَّوَاتِ سَلَمَا رَسُولِ اللَّهُ Part of the preparation is rectifying your life as if I want everybody here to imagine that I'm about to go to Hajj in a week, in two weeks, whatever the case may be. What will I take care of? What do I need to rectify? What do I need to change in the relationships that I have? Continue with that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his book. Constantly make dhikr. Don't let a second go by when you have free time and you don't say subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla quti illa billah. Don't let time go by. You're not saying subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah wa azim, subhanallah wa azim wa bihamdihi. Build that scale for the hereafter. Build that investment for the hereafter. Invest in your real estate for the hereafter. By constantly, what does it take from us? Just a little bit of connection having that taqwa that we gained, inshallah, from the month of Ramadan, that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that whenever you have that free time, فَإِذَا فَرَقْتَ فَانْصَبْ وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ When you're done with your occupation, when you're done with your occupation, you're, you're done being busy, then go to worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and have all your hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All your hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's book, the Qur'an. What are we doing with the Qur'an after Ramadan? Was the month of Ramadan only the only, the, the, the only month for the connection with the Qur'an? No. No. We should be memorizing. We should be under, reading tafsir, understanding the meanings. We should be living by the Qur'an. Okay, this is important for us. How is your relationship with your family and friends? Have you rectified the relationship with your family and friends? The importance of Silat al-Raham, Silat al-Arham, that you, you rectify and connect those bonds, even, you know what, even if those people are difficult to connect bonds with, okay? Then you have to make, it's, it's more of an effort on your part, that you have to make the effort to connect with those people that make it difficult for you. Jannah's not cheap. You have to work for it. Yes, sometimes, you know, you're going to sacrifice, and you might sacrifice your ego, okay? So, Working, you know, uh, we're constantly w a work in progress. We have to understand that. With our co-workers, with our neighbors, with our community. Okay? Sometimes we can do something and say, oh, I got away with it. Or, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving me. No. That is no in indication. You cannot connect worldly gains to whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you or he's not pleased with you. This is all part of the test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us through. Work on improving your character. Work on improving your patience with your family, with, you know, with the elders, with all the different people that you have an opportunity. Try to improve yourself every single day. Have objectives for memorizing the Quran. Have objectives for reading it, learning how to read it, for learning the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Listen to lectures. When you have free time, or you're going on a long trip, or whatever the case may be, listen to lectures. That's the beauty of our religion. You can t take stuff from other people, you know, and Allah will reward them because you learned something from somebody and, and, and you, you, you basically said something that motivated you and motivates other people. You know, in this country or in this society, what happens? They'll say, oh, you know, uh, that's uh, piracy. You're, you're stealing from somebody. No. But we all get reward when you take from somebody's lectures and you benefit from what people have to say. Utilize whatever free time you have because there's no such thing as free time. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us all. Allah maghfir al-Muslimin wal-Muslimat. Al-Ahya'i minhum wal-Amwat. Inna ka anta sami'an qareem wa jibu da'awat. 
اللهم يسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا من هو ما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا من هو ما لم نعلم اللهم يسألك خير ما سألك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وعبادك الصالحين ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعذ بك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وعبادك الصالحين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم ارحم أمواتنا وأموات المسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصر عبادك الموحدين في كل مكان يا حي يا قيوم ربنا أتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم دخلنا جنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز الغفار أقول قولي هذا سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والحمد لله وأقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استوى اعتدلوا حاسب بين المناقب ست الخلل line of shoulder to shoulder foot to foot heel to heel straighten the rows apart perfecting the salah الله اكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال هذا رحمة من ربي فإذا جاء وعد ربي جعله دكا وكان وعد ربي حقا وتركنا بعضهم يومئذ يموج في بعض ونفق في السور فجمعناهم جمعا وعرضنا جهنم يومئذ للكافرين عرضا الذين كانت أعينهم في غطاء عن ذكري وكانوا لا يستطيعون سمعا أفحسب الذين كفروا أن يتخذوا عباد من دون أولياء إنا أعتلنا جهنم للكافرين نزلا قل هل ننبئكم بالأخسرين أعمالا الذين ضل سعيهم في الحياة الدنيا وهم يحسبون وهم يحسبون أنهم يحسنون صنعا أولئك الذين كفروا بآيات ربهم ولقائه فحبطت أعمالهم فلا نقيم لهم يوم القيامة وزنا ذلك جزاؤهم جهنم بما كفروا واتخذوا آياتي ورسلي هزوا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين 
إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا خالدين فيها لا يبغون عنها حولا قل لو كان البحر مدادا لكلمات ربي لنفيد البحر لنفذ البحر قبل أن تنفد كلمات ربي ولو جئنا بمثله مددا قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي أنما إلهكم إله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم uh, just a few quick announcements. Uh, as always, we uh, thank our Qadib for this week, Ustad uh, Ahmed Kandil. Please thank him on your way out before you leave. Uh, we have a few spots uh, for our health program in this summer. Um, if you are interested, um, please see either Brother Waqar or Brother Taj. Uh, it's a 10-week uh, intensive program, so if you're interested, please see one of them. Uh, we also have our uh, mental health awareness event tomorrow at 11 a.m. It's around uh, the topic of suicide prevention. Uh, refer refreshments will be served, so if you are interested, please uh, do come out to that. And finally, um, again, with the uh, Hajj season approaching, um, if you have not performed your Udhiyah, your Qurbani, uh, you're able to do so at one of our kiosks out, um, outside in the hallways. Jazakumullah khairan. Also, one last announcement, uh, there's an NJ Dawa event um, right before uh, Labor Day weekend. So if you're interested, please go on their website for more information. Finally, one last thing, um, at ICMC tonight after Maghrib, there's going to be 
a, uh, a program around uh, finding an alternative to public schooling for, for the Muslim community. Thank <laughs> you. 